All right. So Keith Fournier farms at Lone Rock, Saskatchewan, which is right near the Alberta border, not far from Lloyd Minster. Uh, he's also a director with Sask Canola. And I, Keith has been a great source of information for me over the years with articles and whatnot. And he's, he's always willing to join conversations and host tours because he believes that through sharing experiences, we all get a little smarter. Um, I've, yeah, like I said, I've interviewed Keith a few times for Canola Digest articles and, and probably some other stuff as well. Here's Keith. Thanks, Jay. Um, so I will, Justina, Justine's controlling my, um, my slides here, so I'll get you to advance to the next one. So is my video okay, Jay? You could, uh, is there any lag in it? Uh, no, so far so good, Keith, yep. Okay, that sounds good. So as, uh, so I, where I farm at is called Lone Rock. And, and so this is like, sometimes things just don't seem like they're labeled quite right. And, uh, and so Lone Rock, you know, you'd think one rock. And so this year was a day that, that my uh, brother-in-law, he said, you know, there's, a, there's a, a few rocks out in the field there. Well, he didn't even say a few. He said, there's three or four rocks out in the field. He says, you won't need anything else. Just run around and get them with your pickup. And so this is the end result. And so sometimes you know, you're a little bit deceiving when, when I, I would imagine when my grandfather moved to Lone Rock, he was probably thinking one rock and you can see right here. I mean, we just end up with a pickup of them after we finish seeding. So um, I'll get you to move to the next one, please, Justine. So uh, Paul and Nate had talked about, you know, the, the environment and, and, you know, a lot of how plants respond to the environment. And so, but for the most part, environment is, is out of the control of, of our hands as farmers here. And, and so we, we have to deal with, with the, I guess, manage that environment um, just with what we've got to use on our own farms. And so, I mean, that varies vastly across Western Canada. I mean, you, you look at areas from like Swift Current, Lethbridge, up into the Peace River. And I mean, I'm from Saskatchewan. So, you know, I often think of Meadow Lake down to, you know, south of Regina or, or into that Swift Current area. You have Manitoba, you've got like Russell down to Winkler. The, the, the rainfall amounts you get very vastly. Your growing season varies vastly. And so, so the management practices do vary a lot across Western Canada, but there's, there's a lot of other factors that come in. I mean, I, I'd mentioned the growing season, but there's also the, it might, what might be a right variety for you, whether it's not the right one for someone who's, you know, uh, a province or two over, but maybe it's not even the right variety for your neighbor that's two or three miles down the road because our management practices vary vastly too within our farm. I just, you know, think of equipment. I mean, some of us are, are set up for straight cut and, and maybe the, you know, the next person down the road isn't. We all have different combine capacities. Like I might have a combine that I think, okay, well, I'm, I'm using, I'll combine 1800 acres with that combine. I might have a neighbor that's thinking, you know, well, he can get 3,500 acres out of his combine. And so, so that's a whole different management. And when it comes to canola varieties, the, the choice in that will probably vary too with, with that management, with your equipment, with, with your capacity. I mean, you might even have a dryer on your farm when you talk to, to, to about equipment and a neighbor doesn't have. Well, um, herbicide systems like rotation quite often will dictate herbicide systems we've got. So I know up in our area, I mean, our options for rotation aren't nearly where they would be down in say Southern Manitoba. And so lots of times they will want to use like the, the clear field canolas are, are much more prevalent in Manitoba, especially the Southern part is because they, just because of rotation, they're having to fit the canola into rotation. Whereas up uh, in like Northern Saskatchewan, a lot of Alberta, you know, the, the, um, the clear field maybe isn't as prevalent just because of, we don't have the, we don't have that option. Um, um, this year, uh, another one coming up is variety availability. I mean, usually you think that, 
that you've got a variety that, you know, you just go out and you, you pick your variety. But this year, that, that's another uh, wrench that got thrown into the works was, you know, you might have your variety picked out, but maybe that wasn't available and we have to go down to the second or third one. And also, we, we all have different variants of risk as, as farmers. So I was, I was, yesterday, I went over the, um, got onto the internet, and I was checking out the number of varieties that were available. And, you know, there might be more, but I come up with eight seed companies, and that's if you put Corteva and Bravant into, I, I mean, Pioneer Seeds and Bravant in under Corteva, the, we have eight seed companies, and I counted up 86 different varieties. When I first started farming, there was a choice of you had you had a Polish or an Argentine. So the Polish, okay, so we went and cleaned up, you know, some some Tobin seed, and the Argentine, well, you could go to a West Star. And so now, I mean, we've got 86 varieties, and great that we've got some companies that are cranking out some really good genetics because of that wide variance that I had talked about, you know, environmental conditions and growing season. Uh, there's within the 86 varieties, I mean, there's four different herbicide systems that, that we can use to be able to match into our rotations and, and use for weed control, depending on the weeds we've got. So, I mean, we, we've got some wonderful options out there. But there is a lot of things that make that variety choice really difficult. When, when you're looking at is, how, you know, how do you compare the apples to apples? And like each seed company, they compare yields to different checks. Uh, the, there could be different scale ratings for standability and pot integrity. And so sometimes, you know, that it, it's what might seem as a simple decision becomes a very difficult one. And the, the Canola Council is, uh, I believe will be releasing a pot integrity rating so companies will be rating a pot integrity and hopefully that will be one thing that will be standardized for this coming year and take some of the confusion out of it but for for this year for choosing a variety yeah there are the different um standards and ratings for that pot integrity next slide please justine so to because of uh i guess a lot of choices and, and maybe some confusion out there in 2011, the, the three Prairie Canola Commissions started up, the, were encouraged to start up a performance, canola performance trials. And this was to be able to just give the farmers one more tool to build to compare their yield, the maturity, the standability, all to the same check because uh, different companies are using different checks. And so again, that makes it hard to compare those apples to oranges. So the perform canola performance trials, and I'm gonna call them CPTs for short here. They, it is one more tool that you could use to be able to, to be able go back and just verify that that variety you picked is uh, just to have that confidence that maybe it's the one you do want. So this year we had 31 varieties in, uh, in the CPTs across the three provinces and across the three zone, growing zones. And they were divided into street cut and swath. The, the, there's a protocol for Bill to put these in because we, we want any data that we get off of here. If farmers are gonna be able to use it, it has to be of a high quality and it has to be trusted by the farmers but it doesn't only just have to be trusted by the farmers, it has to be trusted by the seed companies that, that are putting those varieties in. Because if we're not, with the CPDs, if it's not producing good data that can be trusted, they're not gonna to want to have their varieties involved within, within the trials, just because they, they're, it just might um, be misleading on the way out. So, so yeah, data being high quality and trusted is, is number one. So we do have a technical committee which designs the protocols. And within that, we draw expertise from the provincial oilseed specialists from each province. There is a farmer rep from each province that's on there. And the seed companies, pretty near every seed company has a representative that's on the technical committee so that they could feel confident 
that the protocols that, that are used on canola performance trials are going to show their varieties in a fair way. So the, the reason I, I wanted to cover on the 31 varieties this year. So the, the map that Paul had, had showed out and looked at the, you know, you can see there's wide areas of drought. And out of those, um, and out of the, the well, the 31 varieties are still in there, but the, the, the number of sites that we have for the CPTs across the prairie provinces, we lost about 50% of those. And so we're, so we're restricted some in the data that we're able to provide this year. But you know, that same holds true. I mean, the, the CPTs were restricting the data, but we're no different than any other seed company that's providing data for their varieties. They also had probably 50% loss in their plots too. Um, so, so that was just one factor that came, uh, that was right across Western Canada. Maybe not so much Manitoba, but Saskatchewan and Alberta had some difficult conditions this year. So the CPT results, are printed in the Western producer insert that comes out every fall. And also the, each province provides a provincial seed guide. So if you look in there under the, the canola seed varieties and that information you see there all comes out of the canola performance trial data that we that's generated. But there's also the ability to be able to um, go to the canola performance trials website and it's up on the screen there. And so this is what the this is what the website looks like. And so it's searchable that you can choose your at the bottom, you'll see where you could choose your province. You could choose your growing zone type you've got. You could choose your trial type. There's um, so I had talked about the small plots, but there's also field scale trials. So BASF provides their data on all their field scale trials for their varieties um, that they do across Western Canada. So that will be the, the trial type will be the field scale trials. But then for the small plot, there is, you can search for the straight cut varieties and you could also search for the swath varieties. And then at the bottom, you could choose your year that you want to search for. So let's say that you want to you want to pick out um, a variety, or you want to use two or three years. I, and I see on there, 2021 isn't wasn't available here the other day to be checked. But if it isn't there today, it should be there within the next uh, within the next week or so that you'd be able to to view that. But you could you could choose the year you want to check. And for a year like 2021, it might be a great idea to go onto this site and check 2021 plus 2020 or 2019. And you could go over two or three years because maybe the data, because we had some growing, uh, we had some environmental conditions which just weren't natural. And so you can, you can choose over say two or three different years. You could choose over different growing zones. If you want to see, you know, what, what would happen if, you, if you're in a different risk zone. And, and just query for the variety you think might be best chosen for your farm. So this maybe isn't what you want. You know, you, you could use this to choose your own variety, but lots of times you could just use it to, to go on and verify your decision just to see if, yeah, it was the right one, or maybe there's another option we could use. So yeah, just uh, that's the information that uh, another option we could use for growers to be able to do some variety checks to be able to, to, that would best suit our farm and our management. So that wraps it up, Jay. Yeah, thanks.